So I want to talk just a little bit about radiation biology and mostly how it just pertains to, you know, how were those risks in that table, how were they set? And, and frankly, some of them were set uh, based on some experimental data, right? How, how sensitive are tissues to uh, radiation in the lab? Um, and, but some general rules, right? If you take a look at the parts of the cell cycle <clears throat> where uh, the cell is apt actively replicating DNA and get ready to divide. In that er time around that point, that's when the cell is, is most uh, sensitive. And in the S phase, the least sensitive phase, phase. So if you think about it, cells that spend more of their time kind of replicating are more likely to have some proportion in one of, one of those phases right there. And so it is in general, although not always true, that cells that are uh, more highly metabolically active and are replicating more frequently are more sensitive to radiation damage. And there's a number of different ways that can happen. You certainly, uh, an x-ray could directly damage DNA. The x-ray could happen to interact with uh, an atom or a molecule right within a strand of DNA. But more commonly, the damage is indirect. We talked about the production of these um, hydroxyl radicals, and a lot of the damage is mediated through that. You know, any time any of us is irradiated, we, pro we have some of this damage occurring, and so, you know, we certainly don't all develop cancer. As a matter of fact, we're exposed to radiation on a daily basis, uh, just sitting where we are, certainly when we step out into the sun. You know, our body has mechanisms to, to repair that, and frankly, sometimes if the damage is great, the, the cell will just die from that and not propagate or perpetuate that damage that's occurred. And so, so that's an, another part of the reason why we don't see, uh, you know, a bunch of cancers from any radiation effects that we see, right? We, our, our body is set up to repair some of that. This is just showing those phases of the, the cell cycle where we prepare to divide and division is, is undergoing that are very sensitive and kind of this quiescent phase here in the S phase. You know, I, I just wanted to mention that although these, these, it is generally true that cells which have greater reproductive activity are more sensitive, it's not always true. For instance, the lymphocytes and the oocytes are very radiation sensitive, but these are, these are resting cells. And so, you know, there's certainly more to the story than just uh, how, how often the, the cells are replicating. And um, as I mentioned, if you look at those weighting factors on the tables for effective dose, they roughly follow this rule, right? Why is skin, why, why, are, why is the brain, why are muscle cells relatively radiation insensitive? Um, and the reason for that is that they really don't have that same reproductive activity. And I just showed that again, you know, just looking through some of this, right? Here's the skin at a 0.01. And you've got to be a little bit careful because look at the thyroid, right? The thyroid doesn't have a huge weighting factor, but remember, the thyroid is a relatively small, right? It's a very small piece of tissue. It's quite radiation sensitive uh, given, given its size. It contributes a significant proportion, right? 4% to this for an organ which is nowhere near 4% of your total body weight. Um, and so just looking, looking at those numbers to keep that in mind. I think we mentioned the fact that uh, x-rays can interact directly with DNA, but that's uncommon and that most of the damage is uh, mediated through this free radical production. Uh, there are a lot of DNA repair mechanisms that can limit that damage, and then with that severe damage, the cells might become senescent or undergo apoptosis, and th that helps limit those effects. I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the body organ effects. Uh, you know, these whole body effects, the um, lethal dose um, that it would kill 50% of the population at 60 days is approximately four gray in hu humans, right? And this is, this is nothing that anyone would ever be exposed to in, as part of a radiologic procedure. These are really radiation accident levels, right? So acute radiation syndromes, you know, you really suppress the bone marrow with values in that two to four gray range. Your gastrointestinal syndrome, eight to 10 gray, where you really just slough the entire mucosa of your gastrointestinal system. And these cerebrovascular systems where unfortunately you get this terrible cerebral edema and really die from that typically in the matter uh, of uh, hours. 
Um, all these acute radiation syndromes, you know, have sort of different um, manifestations, but I want you to realize, right, if you, if you get 8 to 10 gray, in addition to getting GI syndrome, probably superimposed on that, right, you have this hematopoietic sy syndrome if there was uh, an entire whole body uh, radiation exposure there. It's just that, right, it's unlikely that you survive with this and your death is usually within a couple of weeks, and so really in some ways this terrible GI syndrome almost uh, overwhelms the manifestations of this hemopoietic uh, syndrome here. And notice this cerebrovascular syndrome, right, matter with death within three days. I mean, this GI syndrome and this hematopoietic syndrome, they may not even have fully manifested themselves by the time, unfortunately, you're, you're, you're dead from those things. These radiation, uh, acute radiation sicknesses can have these kind of four stages that people talk about, this prodromal stage where you've got this nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea begins uh, and uh, lasts minutes to days. And again, the, the range for those have to do with what level of exposure did you have? Were you in that hemopoietic range? Uh, so the time at which that would start. You know, a lot of these have a little bit of a latent period um, where the patient actually feels a little bit better after that first prodromal stage. And again, that may last a few hours if the exposure was very high, like in the cerebrovascular syndrome, or a matter of days if it was the uh, GI or the hematopoietic syndrome. And then you get this manifest illness stage, and those symptoms, of course, depend on which of those syndromes, and they may last uh, hours uh, to several months, depending on which one they are, and patients recover. Really, recovery is almost only seen with the hematopoietic uh, syn syndrome. Uh, and